Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is March 3rd, 2023. We saw a reversal or a bounce off the low this Thursday after a Fed head opened its mouth and tell us that we could see a pause and a rate hike maybe in the middle of summer or late summer of this year. So we'll see, but definitely that fueled the fire or maybe we could be just in the oversold type of territory and we are seeing a little bit of a dead cat bounce. But next week, Jay Powell is going to be uh, facing Congress on Tuesday and Wednesday. And I'm sure that's going to bring in some fireworks. So we just have to be cautious of the price action and the, uh, the risk that we're going to put on. So in this uh, video, we're going to take a look at the uh, price action of the S&P 500 and the other indexes, along with the market internals and the sentiment. And we're also going to look at the ETF, the SPY, QQQ, IWM, and also the ES, the E-mini S&P 500 future, and the gold, crude oil, silver, the U.S. dollar, and the 10-year yield. So stay tuned. From this table here, you can see that the Dow Jones Transportation was the uh, best performer of the week. It gained 3.31%, uh, followed by the NASDAQ uh, 100 and the NASDAQ Composite, then the uh, Russell 2000. S&P 500 and uh, the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ, I mean the Dow Jones and New York Stock Exchange composite is the uh, worst performer, but it still gained about one and three quarter of a percent. And looking at the uh, month to date, we see the month to date, the Dow Jones transportation is also uh, uh, best performer. And uh, surprisingly, the Dow Jones Industrial is actually up there in the number two spot, followed by uh, the uh, NASDAQ and then the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000 is actually the uh, worst performer. And looking at the year to date so far, the Dow Jones Transportation and the NASDAQ 100 and the NASDAQ Composite are the uh, top performer for the year, following by the uh, Russell 2000, uh, S&P 500, the uh, New York Stock Exchange Composite, and the worst performer is the Dow Jones Industrial, only uh, gain uh, three quarter of a percent. Looking at this weekly chart of the S&P 500, we see the range was just a little bit over 120 points and it gained almost 76 points for the week or 1.9%. It is uh, still in a one-time framing down even though we had a uh, up week here, but uh, it did close above this 10 week and the 40 week moving average and it is holding this uh, short term trend line here. Looking at the sentiment chart here, we see that the VIX uh, dipped below the 20 uh, uh, level once again, and it closed on Friday at 18.49. So obviously, uh, after the uh, little comment, one of the Fed uh, uh, talking head uh, was saying that the uh, see that there could be a possibility of a pause in uh, summer or late summer of this year. So we'll see. But right now, the market seems to be taking that as a positive and pushing it up. And the VIX uh, dipped back below the 20 level. And also, the uh, put call ratio was actually up above 1. And now it got back inside of this uh, 0 0.7, 5, and uh, 1 level, this zone here. And that's basically is a uh, zone that we see the uh, market participant is kind of in a hedge mode. And then once you get above that 1, then uh, pretty much in a very, very small, and when it get down to uh, below 0.75, then the market participant are getting a little bit more bullish, and basically it's uh, risk on. Above one, it's risk off. And for the internal, looking at this up-down volume ratio, we did see a uh, surge up, uh, seeing uh, 5.7 in favor of the uh, up volume. And uh, But uh, throughout the week, uh, like the uh, one on Thursday, uh, the rally on Thursday, it wasn't much of a, um, you know, buying pressure. But on Friday, definitely uh, there was some uh, buying pressure here, you know, 5.7 to 1 in favor of the up volume. And also uh, quite part of a market participation. We have uh, 1,891 more advancing issue than declining issues. So definitely we are getting a uh, broad market advance on Friday. And in the New York Stock Exchange, the uh, new 52-week high is still outnumbered the new 52-week low. On Friday, uh, we're at uh, 111 more new 52-week high than 52-week low. 
and the cumulative AD line is climbing back up, and so is the S&P 500. So we are not seeing any positive or negative divergence between these two. And here, looking at this internal chart of the NASDAQ, looking at the NASDAQ 100 on Friday, gained over uh, a little bit over 2%, or 245 points, and the up-down volume ratio was 4.3 to 1 in favor of the up volume, and 1934, 1,934 more advancing issue than declining issue. So again, similarly to the uh, New York Stock Exchange, we saw uh, some buying pressure come in and also a broader market participation than the rally on Thursday. And on Friday, we also saw 52-week high outnumber the 52-week low in the NASDAQ market. Because if you look at here, it's uh, the last two weeks or so, uh, there were more new 52-week low than 52-week high in the NASDAQ market. So it's uh, got a little bit of a turnaround on Friday. We'll see what this uh, uh, keeps up in the uh, coming week. And here, looking at the NASDAQ cumulative AD line, we see it is also coming up along with the NASDAQ 100, and we are not seeing any divergence. Now, let's take a look at the index E, starting with the S&P 500. You can see uh, the S&P 500 closed right at this upper range of the expected move here. And uh, right now, it's sitting in this zone here. So for the coming week, we'll be uh, looking at the uh, weekly expected move inside of this area here the upper range will be between 41.40 and 41.20 and the uh, lower range will be uh, between 39.71 and 39.50 so for the coming week we'll be uh, watching to see will the uh, price remain above this uh, trend line and see could it push through this uh, this zone here and come up to this upper range of the expected move and possibly uh, break through it and work toward this uh, 4200 level. But if it is unable to uh, hold this trend line and start uh, break below it, then we'd be uh, keep an eye on the lower range of the expected move between 3971 and 3950 and possibly come back down to this 3900 area. And then that's that 100 also close inside of the upper range of the expected move. And right now it's sitting between these uh, these zones, this two zone here. So for the coming week, uh, we'll be uh, watching the expected move up here, the upper range between 12,670 and 12,600, and also the lower range will be between 11,980 and 11,900. So for the coming week, be watching to see will the uh, price continue to push up toward these uh, upper range. Uh, uh, area here or would it come back down and test this lower range and dip below this low here uh, underneath this uh, 11,800 then be watching for a possible retracement down toward the uh, 11,600. And for the Russell 2000, we see the Russell 2000 got above the uh, 1920 level. So we'll see would it be able to come up to this 1965 area or would it uh, retrace back down because if it does and it uh, dip below this 1880 area, then I'd be uh, looking for the possible retracement back toward the uh, 1780 area. And looking at the Dow Jones Transportation, the Dow Jones Transportation got back above 15,000 levels. So right now, we'll see would it be able to continue to move up and possibly come up to this uh, 15,900 or will it dip back below this 15,000 and come back down to this uh, 14,400, 14,300 area here. And the Dow Jones Industrial was able to get back above this 33,000 area. And right now it seems to be uh, trying to move up here toward the uh, 34,000. So keep an eye on that for the coming week to see what it be able to stay above this area here, above this 33,000 area. And if it doesn't, then uh, watch this low here near the uh, 32,500. And if it failed to hold that, then we'll be uh, watching this level here at the uh, 31,700 area. And for the New York Stock Exchange Composite, we also see it uh, got back above this 15,600. We're going to see would it be able to get up to this 15,900 zone. And if it doesn't, and it dip back below this 15,600, then we'll be uh, watching this uh, 15,240 and possible retracement back down to this uh, 15,000 level.
Now let's take a look at some of the ETFs, starting with the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. You can see I also uh, drew in a zone here, this highlighted area, and that is this balance area. Okay? And you can see that the price basically been uh, you know, balancing in here until today on Friday, it broke above it and got up to this upper range of the expected move. So right now we are watching the price to see would it be able to get up to this zone here at 409.70, right? This low, low volume zone. And uh, basically looking for to retrace this entire balance area. Okay, so be watching for this zone 409 or 410 level to see what it be able to come up and watch for a possible rejection and get a push back down. Then we'd be looking at a retracement back down at this low volume zone here at the uh, 390 area. So that's basically what I'd be watching for the coming week. And here is the uh, expected move on the uh, weekly expected range here. And the upper range is between 413.50 and 411.70 and the lower range is between 396.70 and 394.50 so again look at this lower range here if it dips below this zone here and uh, work yourself back down to this low volume zone then we'll be looking at this uh, 387 area here but if it continue to push up then we'll be uh, looking at the possibility of getting back up to this uh, 411 uh, 415 area here into this zone. So if we get about this 410, right, then we're basically looking at this balance area to be in play. Now for the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, you see that it also closed near the, well, inside of this upper range of the expected move. And right now it is sitting right here at this low volume zone. It has uh, retraced it all the way back from the bottom here you know, came back in and, you know, uh, kind of got uh, rejected this zone again. So I want to basically looking for a higher value up at this area here. So we'll see would it be able to stay above this uh, value area and possibly move toward this uh, uh, zone here at the uh, 305 and the 310 level. So for the coming week, the uh, expected move, uh, for the weekly expected move, we'd be uh, looking at the upper range between 309 and 307 and the uh, lower range between 392 and 390. So the uh, scenario for the upside is to see would it be able to come up for this uh, upper range at this uh, 307, 309 level, or will it uh, come back in to this uh, value area, this balance area, and come back down to this 292 and 290, then work toward this composite point of control here down at somewhere around 282 then ultimately we we'll be looking for a retracement all the way back down to this 260 because that would be the uh, look above and fail type of a strategy that we'll be uh, looking at and that would mean that it would uh, possibly retrace back down to the uh, to the lower edge of this value area and that would be down here somewhere around 260. And for the IWM, the ETF for the Russell 2000, you can see also it tagged the uh, upper range of the expected move and also closed outside of this value area. So once again, we'd be uh, watching to see would it uh, stay above this value area and possibly move up toward the uh, next uh, high volume area. So for the uh, coming week, the expected range that we are gonna be keeping an eye on will be in the uh, upper range this between 196.80 and 195.80 and the lower range will be 187.20 and 186. So for the coming week, the scenario is to see would it be able to continue to push up up uh, to this 94, 194 and come up to this 196 area. But if it come back into this value area, then look for this lower range of 187, 186 to get tagged and then ultimately we we'll be watching for it to retrace back down to this 170 level, just like the QQQ, we're basically looking for a look above and fail type of a, a trading strategy in play. All right, let's take a look at the market profile chart of the ES, the E mini S&P 500. You can see on Friday, it took out this uh, pull high here that left 
uh, from uh, February the 23rd and also this uh, poor high from the uh, 28th. So these uh, two uh, uh, poor high got taken out on Friday. And now let's take a look at what was uh, left behind on Friday. We uh, left behind the single print and down here as well and also here. So left behind three set of single prints and also a lot of these single print down here from Thursday. So I would not be surprised to see after, remember we talked about this FOMC, uh, uh, you know, the scene of the crime, the uh, 4073, and we're talking about that, uh, we was looking for the possibility of coming back up and back test this before it uh, takes it down and uh, come down and clean up some of these uh, core structure uh, down in uh, January here, these uh, down here. So we still could uh, be looking at that uh, scenario that we might see a little bit of a push uh, next week, maybe doing uh, Jay Powell's uh, congressional uh, uh, review or whatever you call that. Uh, maybe we could uh, see that push up and then uh, we get a drop uh, coming back down and clean up a lot of these uh, poor structure and the possibility of even coming back down to this 3900 area and fill these uh, single prints. And looking at the E-mini S&P 500 candlestick chart here, this is a two hour chart. Price came down here on Thursday, right at this uh, low volume zone, this edge here on this uh, balance area. And today it came up and closed right at this zone here. So let me put the uh, uh, expected move uh, back on. The, the expected move is up here, the upper range, and it closed just right at the uh, the edge of this uh, expected move, this upper range, and also up in this uh, low volume zone here. So for the uh, coming week, remember we have this uh, 4073, the FOMC level here, and that is also in confluent or near this uh, VPOC, somewhere around 4067 and a quarter. And looking at the uh, next week's uh, expected move here, the upper range is between 4140 and 4127. And the uh, lower range is uh, between 39.77 and 39.50. So next week we'll be uh, watching to see what it uh, be able to come up and get up to this uh, 4073 back test that, and would it uh, continue to move up here to this 4100 and get into this zone here, this low volume zone, and see if we uh, see a rejection coming back down to this zone here near the uh, 4050 area. So uh, that is one possible scenario. The other possible scenarios that come up and uh, get rejected at that 4073 up to 4075 and push us back down and come back down, retrace this balance area and work down toward this uh, low, uh, lower range of the uh, expected move and come back down to this uh, 3950 area here and possibly test this zone once again. So these are the two critical zones to keep an eye on for the coming week is this 4050 and 4110 area of 4100. If it could uh, get about the 4100, then we could be uh, looking at the possibility of moving up here toward this uh, 4140 area or this high volume node here at 4125, 4127. But the uh, other thing is uh, if it get rejected back down into the below this zone, then we could see a retracement back on this uh, balance area and possibly get back down to this 3950 area. Then we could even uh, look at the uh, possibility of this zone putting back in play this uh, uh, little bit of a balance area here. So those are the scenario that I will be uh, looking at for the coming week and these two zones here. Looking at the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar got a pop this week, but also it pulled back a little bit the uh, last couple of days. But we'll still be uh, looking at this level here, somewhere around this 105 to uh, get tagged. So I'm looking for the dollar to continue to move up and take out this 105 in the near term. And this week, we saw the 10-year yield actually went above the 4% uh, level, and then on Friday, it kind of pulled back. So we'll see. I think it is still going to be uh, stay above this 3.9 and then push up to this uh, 4.2 area. Then we'd be uh, looking at the uh, high here, somewhere around 4.3.
And here, the difference between the 10-year and the 2-year, we see the yield inversion of 0.899. So getting close to this low here, this low is uh, 0.904. So um, be watching this to take out this low. Looking at crude oil, crude oil actually held this 72 level, and right now it seems to be uh, breaking out of this trend line here. So I'll be uh, keeping an eye on this 8276 to see what it'll be able to come back up into this zone here. Look at silver here. It got a nice bounce off of this low here. And right now it seems to be uh, sitting back above the 21. But I'm still looking for silver to possibly come back down and do another back test of this low or into this zone. Then we'll see what it'll be able to sustain a move back up toward this uh, you know, 2122 area. But again, I'm basically still looking at the zone to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, get uh, get tested here. And by the way, I posted a video uh, last week on this um, how to use this fixed range volume profile from TradingView and also how to set it up. So go and check out that video and let me uh, know what you think. I have the link in the description below. So just click on that link and it should take you to the uh, TradingView. And looking at gold, gold is coming up to this low volume zone here at this uh, 1856 level. Now, if we get above this, then I expect it to possibly move up toward this 1910, 1920 area because it's uh, basically looking for this thing to retrace this balance area. But if it dips back below, then I'm looking for this possibility of work itself back down to this zone here this low volume zone near the uh, 1775. And looking at natural gas, you see natural gas got, got a nice bounce up and right now it's sitting right at this edge here. So if it could get above this uh, low volume zone, then we could see it possibly move up into this high volume zone here and tag this uh, high volume node at $3.68 area. But if it's uh, unable to get above this zone, then we'd be uh, looking for it to come back down to this composite point of control here and possibly retrace back down this low, I mean this high volume area and get back down to this area near 250 area. In summary, we did see a little bit of a reversal here on Thursday after one of the Fed had <laughs> told us that we could see a possible pause on the rate hike in mid or late summer. So we'll see. But definitely the market took it in stride. And it could be that it is just a little bit of a dead cat bounce because after all, we have seen the S&P 500 came all the way down. And also we saw, you know, uh, four consecutive down day and then one up day and then another uh, uh, down day and look like we... Uh, getting another consecutive, you know, two consecutive down day before we saw this bounce off of the low here and then it trigger a massive, you know, short covering rally and uh, just pushes up. So right now we're going to keep an eye on it to see will there be uh, positive momentum carry uh, next week and will Jay Powell fuel the fire by uh, being a little bit more dovish. So, uh, but if he sound any kind of hawkish, We'll, we could see this market just reverse back down and come back all the way down to this other end of this balance area here. So although the internal is not that strong, but it is not showing that uh, too much weakness either. So it's kind of wait and see. So just be cautious out there. You know, anything could happen right now doing a little bit choppy zone that where the market is trying to uh, establish or decide a direction. So be sure to smash the thumbs up and help me promote this video on YouTube. And if you are new to this channel, be sure to click on the subscribe if you want to continue to see this type of content from me. Thank you for watching and stay safe.